Hey, what's up, YouTube? This is Bobby, aka Paginator, and I'm here today with a spoiler free review of Mexican Gothic by Sylvia Moreno Garcia. This book is indeed a very gothic story. It takes place in the 1950s in Mexico, and we follow our main character, Noemi who is kind of just living the rich girl life. Her dad can afford to send her to university for however long she wants, so she's kind of flitting from program to program, and she's settled on anthropology that she's really, really interested in. So she's flirted with a few boys here and there, and there's kind of one boy back home that's uh, kind of a good marriage prospect for her, but she's not super into him. And her cousin, Catalina, who was recently married and moved away, um, writes to her... And the letter is uh, startling, uh, a little bit alarming. And so Noemi and her father are both concerned. And so Noemi is sent to visit Catalina and make sure that she's okay. So Catalina married this dude that, uh, his name's Virgil. And he, uh, he comes from a family who are of British ancestry, but live in Mexico in this house up in the mountains that's like a mansion and it's kind of old and moldy and crumbling and it's just not a pleasant place and uh when she gets there noemi um goes to see catalina and catalina's like oh no no i just have tuberculosis things are fine you didn't need to worry about me or come all the way here there's nothing wrong, I promise. Even though her initial letters were, like, suggesting that something was wrong with the marriage and the way she was being treated. So, um... So Noemi decides to stay for a while and investigate because that's not like her cousin to just be like, oh, just kidding. She doesn't do that. So she um, meets Virgil, which is Catalina's husband, and... Then Virgil's brother Francis, um, his mom, I forget her name, the grandfather Howard, who's super creepy, and uh, there's a few servants in the house, but they're kind of just stuck there, and it's a weird place. Like, they have this rule at dinner time, nobody speaks, you just shut up and eat your food, and they won't let her smoke in her room, and she loves to smoke cigarettes, this being the 1950s, you know, and we didn't know everything about cigarettes that we do now, so that was kind of a popular thing, and so she's irritated of all these rules in this household, and she is certain that there is something off, and so when she finally gets to sit one-on-one -on -one with Catalina, Catalina tells her, I need your help, there is a woman in town who makes this, um, I forget the word she uses, kind of like some potion or something, herbal concoction that's going to help me, I need you to go get this from her. And so Noemi is like, okay, something really weird is going on. Um, as she's staying there for a few weeks, she starts to realize that this household has a lot of very dark history. And she's told about some of it and some she just kind of stumbles onto. And there are creep-tastic things that happen. Sometimes the writing description was so creepy that I was like, eh, I'm going to have to set this book down for a minute. Um, some of the descriptions, too, especially toward the end, can get quite um, violent as well as just disgusting. Um, I don't think I'm going to take this and put it in my middle school library because I feel like there, there's an attempted sexual assault in here, so trigger warning for that. Um, and I don't want my kids uh, reading this due to the language that's used to describe it. Um, if it were handled in a different way, maybe they could, they could read it. But just the way that this author writes about it, it I don't think I want my little 12 and 13 year olds to be picking this up. But um, for anyone maybe, let's say, 15 or older, I think this is a fantastic read, especially if you're looking for a spooky, creepy story. Um, I've heard mixed reviews on this, but I really, really enjoyed it. I think I gave it like a four and a half stars um, in my reading thing that I use and it's very 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 atmospheric so even if you're just thinking I want like something with a creepy vibe creepy atmosphere this would be a fantastic book to pick up because 
it is very very creepy and yeah I, I can't say more without spoiling some things and I did promise this was going to be spoiler free um other last thoughts on this I think the cover is gorgeous, of course, um, that's the least important thing, but it is pretty to just look at, and sometimes books that are pretty don't have good substance in them, but I did really, really enjoy this. Um, in terms of Mexican culture, there's not a lot going on there. We do have, um, we are told that some characters speak Spanish, but it's all written in English, so you don't need to know Spanish to understand any of this. Um, and the household that Noemi visits is very British because of the British ancestry. So we don't get much in terms of Mexican culture, which I was kind of missing a little bit. I thought since it was spooky and set in Mexico, we would have a little Dia de los Muertos vibes in there. But that wasn't really present. Um, I think that's like the only deduction that I could really take away from it, which is why it was four and a half and not five stars. But again very very enjoyable read and i would definitely recommend it um with the caveat that you're maybe like 15 or older just because of the sexual assault content that happens there so there we go i hope that you all are having a wonderful and bookish day i should be getting my fairy loot box very soon so hopefully we can have that to look forward to and other fun bookish things happy reading adios